chocolate, the most beloved sweet on the planet. Every year, billions of pounds of it are consumed worldwide, making chocolate one of the most influential food creations in human history. Yet beneath its smooth shell and irresistibly melting flavor lies an intricate journey of craftsmanship and precision. It all begins with cacao pods, hand harvested in tropical regions, then carefully refined through a series of exacting stages before emerging as flawless chocolate bars that bring joy to millions each day. But what secrets lie behind this indulgent delight? Join us as we uncover the fascinating story behind the world's sweetest creation. Did you know that some chocolate bars sell for $490, a price comparable to a new iPhone? Yet at the other end of the production chain, millions of farmers in Ghana and the Ivory Coast, two countries that supply the majority of the world's cacao, earn only a few dollars each day. Some emerging companies are beginning to change this, such as Feastables, Mr. Beast's chocolate brand, which follows fair trade standards, ensuring that cacao farmers receive fair wages and that production processes are transparent. Knowing that the chocolate bar in your hand is made from the sweat of these farmers, would you be willing to pay a little extra to help them live better? The journey of chocolate begins with raw cacao beans, harvested in the humid tropical regions of South America, West Africa, and Southeast Asia. Areas blessed with year-round warmth and abundant rainfall, the perfect conditions for cacao trees to thrive. Every cacao pod consumed around the world is harvested entirely by hand. There are no roaring engines here, only the scent of soil, the heat of the sun, and the skilled hands of farmers at work. From the slender trunk, tiny blossoms bloom directly from the branches, and within five to seven months, they grow into cacao pods about the size of a human hand, with thick, rough shells that look like nature's own cocoons. When the pods gradually turn golden orange or deep red, it's the sign that they've ripened. Farmers armed with machetes or specialized sickles carefully cut each pod from the tree. The freshly harvested pods are gathered in woven baskets and carried to collection sites where they are split open. As soon as the baskets filled with cacao pods arrive at the collection site, the process of bean extraction begins. This stage is one of the most crucial steps in determining the quality of the chocolate that will come later. On the damp ground, Farmers use sharp machetes or wooden clubs to split each pot in half. Inside those thick shells lie rows of cacao beans encased in a soft white pulp. A single cacao pod can contain between 30 and 50 beans. The splitting must be done with great care since too much force can crush the beans and affect the fermentation process that follows. Once the thick shell is opened, harvesters gently scoop out clusters of beans from the pod's chamber letting them fall into large wooden boxes or baskets lined with banana leaves. Meanwhile, the empty husks are collected separately and left to decompose into organic fertilizer, while the fresh beans are quickly transported to prevent them from turning sour too soon. Once the cacao beans are removed from their shells, they are quickly moved into the fermentation stage. Within just a few hours after extraction, the moist beans are poured into large wooden boxes or trays lined with banana leaves. This natural environment helps maintain humidity and temperature, creating ideal conditions for microorganisms to thrive. Fermentation usually lasts between five and seven days and is entirely controlled by the farmer's experience. In the early phase, naturally occurring yeasts and airborne microbes begin breaking down the white pulp surrounding the beans, generating both heat and moisture. The temperature inside the boxes can rise to around 120 degrees Fahrenheit, which triggers biochemical reactions that gradually change the bean's color from white to reddish brown. As the enzymes continue to act, they release aroma precursors, the foundation of the distinctive chocolate scent that will emerge after roasting. Each day, farmers must turn the beans by hand or with a shovel to ensure even fermentation throughout the pile. No sophisticated instruments are used. Years of experience teach them to recognize the right moment by smell and color. When the beans give off a mild, slightly tangy aroma and the surrounding pulp has completely disappeared, the fermentation is complete. 
the mass of beans is then spread out to cool naturally in the open air. At this point, the beans no longer carry the fruit sweetness, but instead release the first true fragrance of raw chocolate, a blend of ripe fruit, earth, and damp wood, signaling they are ready for the drying phase. After the fermentation stage is complete, the cacao beans move on to the drying phase, where their moisture content is reduced to a safe level for storage and transport. On the farms, the beans are spread out in thin layers over wooden platforms, large tarps or woven bamboo trays, and left to dry under natural sunlight. Under favorable weather conditions, the drying process takes about five to 10 days. Every few hours, farmers use wooden rakes to turn the beans, ensuring they dry evenly and do not develop mold. By the end of this process, the ideal moisture level must drop to around six to 7% just enough for the beans to become crisp without cracking from excessive dryness. When ready, the cacao beans turn a deep brown, their surfaces become smooth and dry, and they release a faint, characteristic aroma. At this stage, the beans are packed into jute or natural fiber sacks, labeled by region, and shipped to processing factories. The purchase price at the farm level is roughly $1,000 per ton, but once the beans reach the United States, their value can rise to 10,000 US dollars per ton, thanks to the refining and manufacturing process. Yet cacao farmers receive only about 6.6% of the final value. Before entering the cleaning stage, cacao beans must undergo rigorous quality inspections to ensure that only the finest batches proceed to production. At the factory, technicians take random samples from each sack, cutting the beans in half to examine their color, moisture level, and degree of fermentation inside. High-quality beans display a uniform brown hue, a light, pleasant aroma, and no signs of mold. They are also weighed and screened to remove impurities such as stones, dry husks, or shriveled beans. All data is meticulously recorded to trace the origin of every shipment. Only after passing these evaluations do the cacao beans qualify for the cleaning line the true beginning of the industrial chocolate making process. Once the dried cacao beans arrive at the factory, forklifts unload the heavy sacks and pour them directly into the feed hopper. From there, an automated conveyor system carries the beans through a preliminary cleaning unit that removes any remaining debris. When the beans reach the required level of purity, they continue toward the roasting chamber, the very heart of the entire production line. Inside this chamber, the beans are roasted at temperatures between 250 and 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Hot air circulates constantly, ensuring that each bean cooks evenly from the inside out. Over the course of 25 to 30 minutes, moisture is released and the Maillard reaction begins, transforming the beans to a rich, dark brown and releasing the first true aroma of chocolate. Every factory guards its own secret formula of time and temperature, since even a slight deviation of a few degrees can cause the beans to burn or lose their natural fragrance. Once perfectly roasted, the beans are rapidly cooled with a stream of cold air to lock in flavor and prevent oxidation. At this point, they are ready for the next stage, shell removal and grinding, where the cacao nibs begin to reveal the full depth of their flavor. After roasting and cooling, the cacao beans are sent into the winnowing system to separate the outer shells from the inner nibs. First, a set of high-speed rotating rollers cracks the beans open, breaking the brittle shells away from the dense cores. Then, a strong stream of air passes through the mixture, blowing away the lightweight husks while allowing the heavier cacao nibs to fall and collect below. Once separated, the nibs are sorted by size and passed through an automated inspection system that ensures complete purity and uniformity. Only after meeting these standards are the cacao nibs ready to enter the fine grinding stage, where both cocoa butter and cocoa mass will be extracted. Once the cacao nibs are separated from their shells, they are fed into ball mills or roller refiners to reduce their particle size to an ultra-fine consistency. Under the combined effects of friction and heat, the natural cocoa butter inside begins to melt, turning the solid mixture into a thick, 
paste-like substance known as cacao liquor. During this stage, the grinders run continuously for anywhere between 8 and 72 hours until the particles reach a size of only 15 to 25 microns, giving the chocolate its smooth texture and melt-in-your-mouth quality. The heat generated within the chamber is carefully maintained at around 140 degrees Fahrenheit to preserve the natural aroma and prevent the material from burning. When the desired consistency is reached, the cacao liquor is pumped into high-capacity hydraulic presses operating under thousands of pounds per square inch of pressure. This immense force separates the natural fat, cocoa butter, which makes up nearly half of the bean's total weight, from the solid mass. The pale golden liquid is collected separately and later used to produce white chocolate, cosmetics, and pharmaceuticals, while the remaining solid residue becomes cocoa cake. These cakes are cooled and then pulverized at speeds of 20,000 to 30,000 revolutions per minute, transforming them into fine cocoa powder with particles measuring only 10 to 30 microns. By the time the process ends, three essential ingredients emerge. Cocoa powder, cocoa butter, and cacao liquor. The foundational elements of every chocolate and cocoa beverage in the world. In the next stage, cocoa powder and cocoa butter are blended once again in proportions unique to each manufacturer, creating the base mixture for chocolate. Inside massive mixing tanks, melted cocoa butter is combined with cocoa powder, refined sugar, milk powder, vanilla, and a small amount of lecithin, an emulsifier that keeps the mixture stable, smooth, and uniform. Every brand has its own secret formula. Even a 1% or 2% adjustment in ingredients can completely alter the flavor and texture of the final chocolate. Once the ingredients are perfectly unified, the mixture is transferred into a conching machine, a large industrial mixer equipped with heavy metal paddles that churn continuously at temperatures between 260 and 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Here the chocolate is stirred, kneaded, and aerated for anywhere from 6 to 72 hours depending on the product type. The friction and heat generated during conching help evaporate bitter compounds and volatile acids while evenly dispersing cocoa butter throughout the mixture. This process gives chocolate its silky structure and balanced flavor. For standard chocolate, conching typically lasts 8 to 12 hours, while premium brands may extend it up to three full days, achieving a texture that is nearly flawless smooth, glossy, and melting instantly upon contact with the tongue. When the process is complete, the chocolate mixture develops a deep aroma, uniform viscosity, and refined taste, ready for the next stage. The next stage is tempering, a process that determines the shine, snap, and melting behavior of chocolate. The liquid chocolate from the conching machine is first heated evenly to around 110 degrees Fahrenheit, breaking down any unstable cocoa butter crystals. It is then rapidly cooled to between 80 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, which encourages the formation of the most stable crystal type known as beta vifa. This structure gives chocolate its signature glossy finish and crisp snap. Once this stage is reached, the mixture is gently reheated to about 88 to 90 degrees Fahrenheit and held briefly to stabilize the crystal structure completely. Even a small deviation of a few degrees can cause the chocolate to lose its luster, become crumbly, or develop a white, powdery layer called bloom on the surface. Thanks to this precisely controlled tempering process, the finished chocolate emerges smooth, elastic, and beautifully reflective, producing that satisfying click when broken, the hallmark of perfectly crafted chocolate. Once the tempered chocolate reaches a stable state, it moves to the molding line, the stage where it finally takes shape. Each batch of liquid chocolate is automatically poured into metal or food-grade plastic molds with exceptional precision, ensuring that every cavity is filled with the same amount of chocolate. Immediately after pouring, low-frequency vibrating machines are activated to remove trapped air bubbles and spread the chocolate evenly, allowing it to flow into every fine detail of the mold from brand logos to decorative edges. When the chocolate is fully settled, the molds pass through a circulating cooling chamber maintained at around 45 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Here, the cocoa butter crystallizes completely, 
giving the chocolate its firm texture while preserving its glossy surface and perfect snap. After several minutes of cooling, the molds are gently inverted by an automated release system, freeing the solidified bars onto a conveyor belt. Each piece then undergoes visual inspection using optical cameras that detect cracks, chips, or shape imperfections. Finally, the finished bars are sent down the packaging line, where they are wrapped in foil or specialized plastic film and sealed tightly to preserve aroma and crispness, completing the remarkable journey from cacao bean to finished chocolate bar. From tiny cacao beans to perfectly crafted chocolate bars, this journey stands as a testament to the harmony between nature, technology, and human passion. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share your favorite type of chocolate in the comments, and subscribe to the channel so you won't miss the next journeys, where we uncover how the world is made, one process at a time.